Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I have someone very interesting today, a man called John Gosling, and he's a body awakener. Now I'll let him explain more of that. What he does is work with single women as well as men. And so today I'm going to ask him a few more questions about how he works and how he helps single women who are looking for love. So welcome, John. Really nice to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> so can you ex please explain in the most easiest way what a body awakener is? Well, the majority of people uh, and that includes women, of course, uh, <laughs> work through their heads in, in, in society. So we're very head-based society. So what I try to do is to help people connect through their bodies rather than their heads. Because uh, when we talk about uh, our gut feelings or a heartfelt response, mm. we know that there's some form of wisdom that's contained within the body. Yeah. So what I try and do is to work with people to go beyond the mind and into the body and find the wisdom that uh, is inevitably there in everybody. Okay, so can you explain more of how exactly you do that? Say for example, I was coming to you, what would the process be like? Well it depends on what particular thing you wanted to, to try and resolve, but generally speaking what, what uh, I would do is to understand the situation which you're trying to come to terms with and when, when I do that then connect with what it feels like in your body and we do that with different sorts of breath so um, breath is a, is a gateway into our consciousness but it's also something we do automatically every single day without thinking about it. Mm. So the wonderful thing about breath is that it can bring both the conscious and the unconscious to life and, and through different sorts of breath we can change our state mm -hmm. you know very often we'll we'll be confronted with a situation and someone will say to us take a deep breath and calm down yeah true yeah and 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 when we do that our state starts to change mm -hmm. and the reality is that we do not use our breath a hundred percent we we um i think uh, research has shown that in the last 200 years we've probably used 25% less of our breath than we do um, today okay. and that's because we have a, a, a more uh, sedate lifestyle mm. um, and, and so we don't connect with our breath, the fullness of our breath. We may do so through exercise, probably is the most common, or sometimes sex, but mm. in either case we don't commonly connect with our breath and connecting with our breath helps us connect with our body. Okay. And then, uh, and then the other aspect is the energy body. It's working with energy through the chakras uh, and, and connecting with our spiritual connection as well. Okay. So how 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 would you do that? Same work with the energy body and connecting with our spiritual connection. If if I were to come to you, for example. Um. So, again, how I would do it is by taking breath, connecting to what feelings that you may have in different parts of your body. Mm. Um, again, we trap trauma in different parts of, of our body, uh, believe it or not. So sometimes we can be conscious of, oh, I've got a dull ache here. Yeah. And it might not be through exercise or muscle strain, it might be something we're physically carrying in our bodies. Mm. So just breathing into it and connecting to it, um, we find what actually that essence of us is in there and sometimes people talk about releasing it but mm. I talk about integrating it because it's a right. part of ourselves right. we, we suppressed and kept tense and within ourselves mm. so can you explain a bit more about integrating it yeah um, so for example I'll give, I'll give an example of myself yeah. um, one of the things that I, I connected with was um, in my solar plexus um, was my seven-year-old child that wasn't allowed to play mm. and I'd lost a sense of fun and I was very very serious and didn't, I'm not really playful yeah. <laughs> but, and, and because of that mm. I you know I, I, I live very much in my head I, I'm not so much in my body and then 
I found this seven-year-old boy that was fright, frightened of actually playing and having fun because he had to be a big boy and grown up. Mm. And by connecting with him, uh, sometimes I, 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 say, I say to him, or he says to me, I get a feeling here in my, in my solar plexus. Yeah. And, you, and he says, I, I want to play. You know, I want to come out and play. I want to have some fun. Mm. I'll stop being serious. Mm. And, and I have a dialogue with him mm. as a result of that. Mm. And, and, and equally, the, the, there's another aspect of myself which, um, as a three-year-old, um, I've not been able to uh, feel nurtured and loved. And, and, and when I'm feeling a bit insecure, it's that three-year-old that comes out that mm. wants wants a big hug. Oh, yeah. And 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 I realise that, and and I can say, don't worry. Let's let's have a hug. And if I'm on my own. I hug myself mm. and reassure him mm. and say, yeah, it's all okay, you're loved. Mm. And, and it's really about, for me, learning self-acceptance and love of oneself mm. and in all our different aspects. And, and we're not perfect beings. Part of the reason that we come to Earth is not to be perfect. Mm. It's to experience life, its ups and downs, and, and, and to pick up life's lessons. And picking up life's lessons is learning to accept and not necessarily just fighting against it but being with it yeah there's with a lot of the women who come to me there can be a lot of resistance and what i also share them is about breathing into it i mm -hmm. do meditation as well and acceptance that's the forgiveness and acceptance i found that have been very powerful very powerful yeah. tools a a absolutely mm. and and w when we do that the world starts to change around us. Yes. Yes. So, um, obviously, as you know, I'm a love and relationship coach for single women who are looking for love. Um, would you tell me what's been your experience of working with with women and they've come to you and they may feel pain or hurt or issues around men? What have you found to be the, the biggest issues that they've come to you with? Well, I, th I think fi primarily it's women taking on the men's world. How can you say more about that? Yeah, um, well, well there's two aspects to it. There's one, feeling the need to complete, compete with men. So competing with men in terms of the workplace, it's uh, the workplace tends to be a masculine environment because it's dominated by men. Mm. And when it's dominated by men, there's a very big macho culture. So in order for them to find their way, they have to adopt the masculine. Mm. And that and that actually reduces their, their actual empowerment because they're not being true to themselves. Yeah. Because they, they feel they have to compete with men because that's the environment they're in. Mm. And, and, and I think men miss so much opportunity with working with women to bring out the qualities women can build rather than trying to clone them into men. Mm. And, and, and so, so there's an issue of, about using femininity in a way which empowers rather than makes them less. Because in the workplace very often women feel if they're feminine, they're less. Yeah. And, and, and hence the reasons why you know women feel compelled to wear business suits. Mm, mm. You know, it's a way of fitting in, in into a male environment. Yeah. So, so, so that's a really important aspect. The other one is in the area of sexuality. Yeah. Where where women are often felt obliged to comply with male requirements and male standards. Right. So, so. So, know, what would what would male standards be, well, in your opinion? Um, typically, it would be overtly being sexual as opposed to sensual. Right. So, so um, you know, very often uh, women will say to me, you know, I've had sex with a man, and I wasn't really ready. Mm. You know. And uh, as a result of that, I feel in some degree violated. I'm not talking about rape, but I'm just talking about even, even a state of arousal where obviously women take a while to 
become in their full flow. Um, and men are very often very immediate in their sexual response right. and not very patient um, and will probably go for the genital area before the rest of the body. And I'm sure a lot of women will identify with that mm. at some point in their lives. Mm. And, and, and the point is that even if it's a one-off experience, it can produce some trauma in the body. Right. And one of the things that uh, I do is something called Yoni Healing. Okay. Um, where we explore, um, and, and it's a beautiful ritual. Mm. Again, it's not going straight for the Yoni, it's about expansion and opening up the woman. And so for, so for anyone who's watching who doesn't understand what the yoni is, could you <laughs> let uh, yoni, yoni is a tantric term yeah. um, for the female genital area, um, although it can be tra translated direct to the, the vagina because it's um, translation from Hindi means sacred cave. So, so, and I think that's a really important term, you know, to recognise that that area in a woman is sacred, yeah. and 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 it's it should be sacred both to females and to males, yeah. and because immediately you use the word sacred, it starts to invoke an idea of respect, mm. Of, mm. of of spirit, and going beyond just a functional muscle. Mm. Yes, yes. Mm. And, and, and starts to connect with the emotion and the flow mm. of life as well. Mm. And, and, and it's the other fascinating thing I, I, I love about uh, Yoni is the fact that it, it, it's the commencement of life mm. as well in that area. So as well as obviously creating a fertilized egg immediately through sex, it's then the process of birth. Yeah giving of life that mm. comes ultimately out of you, I think. Mm. Mm. So, so it's a place of immense power and creativity. So, and, mm. and, 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 and needs, in my opinion, a lot of respect and honouring because of that. Mm. So how would, what would you say to a woman if, if, if she's in a, a situation where she herself um, might f feel pressure? How would you suggest she handles that in the moment? Well, one of the big things that we work on, and, and we do this in a, and I'll say we, with my business partner, yeah. we, um, we run things called cuddle workshops, or, or we prefer to call them conscious touch. Mm. And we, we talk about finding your no, and that no is a complete sentence. Mm. No is a word that requires no explanation. Mm. And no is something that happens in the moment. It's not a no forever. You can change your mind. Yeah. But being able to say no and being heard in your no is a very powerful experience for a lot of women. Mm. Um, and, and boundaries in our platonic touch, because it's complete, as I say, completely non-sexual, is a huge element of what we do mm. and, and, and women come to our workshops and are overcome in some occasions by the fact that they are actually being listened to mm. having their desires met because when we encourage women and men when they say no to then find a yes so you might not want your foot rubbed mm. But is there somewhere else you might like rubbed? Yeah, I might like my hands rubbed. Mm. So then you find what you would like, and then you might receive a hand rub, and if you like it, you may stick with it, or you might try something else. Mm. But each time, the person that's receiving is in full control. They're not being done to. Mm. It, it's about active receiving mm. and consciousness. Mm. And I think it's a huge issue for women, this feeling of not being heard. Right. And, and, and I think 
again, in my experience, a lot of women have that confidence taken away from them and it creates a huge fear and contraction mm. and as a result uh, sex may come from a place of obligation you know meeting someone else's need yeah uh, a sense of duty mm. what I try and do with uh, the touch workshops both, both platonic and my tantric workshops is to help women connect with the authentic and know that they're going to be listened to. Mm. And learn to express boundaries and be very clear about that and clear communication. And, um, you know, th th there's something called the Wheel of Consent that we work with as well. Okay. Which is a, which is a fabulous model which takes apart giving and receiving mm. so that people get to understand what it is to actually feel what they want, feel into what they want and, and then be able to ask for it. Yes. And then working with the other person to be clear about that transaction mm. so, so that the other person is also clear because um, we used an example where um, a married couple always had cheesecake on their anniversary. Yeah. Um, because on, on their honeymoon, they had this, this wonderful cheesecake mm. um, and, and it just brought back reminders yeah. of, of that magical moment of being away together. Yeah. And uh, years later, um, ten years later, the, um, the woman says to the man, are you really enjoying that cheesecake? And he says, I, I don't really like cheesecake. Oh! And uh, she said, well, why are you eating it? She said, well, because I thought you liked it. And she says, well, I hate it. <laughs> but but I, I was doing it because I thought you wanted it. Mm. And so, you know, there's lots of situations that we can get into as, as, as a partnered couple where we think we're pleasing the other person mm. and doing something out of love. Yeah. You know, not necessarily duty, but out of love and compassion. Thinking it's what the other person wants, mm. and it's not. So mm. it's really about clear communication, yes. understanding what the other person really wants, and understanding uh, yourself as well, isn't it? Absolutely. absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and if you don't understand what you want, then you're never going to really feel happy because you'll always be questioning what's happening around you. Yes. So yes. very much the journey I take people through is to start to understand what you want. Mm -hmm. and, um, for, for the title of the work, workshop we run on uh, Wheel of Consent, we call it Tell Me What You Want, What You Really, Really Want. <laughs> <laughs> from, the, from the Spice Girls. <laughs> Do you sing it as well? No, no, we play it. <laughs> like, okay. I, I think everyone would walk out if I started singing it. <laughs> so, so that sounds like it's a wonderful place to actually gain the experience of A, getting in touch with what you want and expressing it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah brilliant so fantastic so what would your advice be given your experience as a as a body awakener for single women who are looking for love and are, and are struggling what mm -hmm. would you say the key things that you would of knowledge you would impart on them well I think the most important thing is to understand why you're looking for love mm. because if you're looking for love because all your friends um, are paired off and, and, and are in fantastic relationships or you perceive them to be in fact fantastic. Is that really what you want? Actually mimicking your friends. Right. Is that, is, is that truly your desire? Mm. So, so, you know, you might, you might uh, want to be in a relationship to have a child. Mm. Um, but it's understanding why you want to be in a relationship rather than I want to be in a relationship and mm. what and, and by doing that one then starts to understand what are the things that are important to you as a person mm. as, what, what are the things that really matter to you mm. but, but when you start to express them it's then going beyond that and saying well, why do I want a child? What What's the reason? Is it I want to perpetuate my genes? 
it feels something that comes from my heart and I really want to be a mother mm. um, or is it well we've always been brought up we've got to get married and have children mm. what is that motivation is it mm. coming from obligation is it coming from love is it coming from a needy place mm. and, and start to understand that because if it's coming say from a needy place then when you're going into a relationship you're going to be needy you're going to be mm. likely to compromise what you really want in order to get a child yeah and then when you have the child you start then to see the reality of the relationship around you mm. and, and and the fact it's actually not what i want because the because having a child is a wonderful gift but there is a lot of life that fits around it mm. and, and, and being able to have a child in a loving relationship is, 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 must be the ultimate aim mm. and, 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 and sadly lots, lots of people, both men and women, end up having children mm. um, because of the desire to have children and then suddenly find that the relationship isn't what they want. Right. Yeah. Meeting their needs. Mm. Mm. So, so it's about understanding about relationship, and well, I guess you know more about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just looking at my notes. So you mentioned something about loving yourself. Can you explain a bit more about how a woman and men, of course, can can do that, and the importance of that if they want to be in relationships? Well, I, I guess I've talked about some of that already, but it's really getting to know yourself mm. and it's not a airbrushed version of yourself, it's the, the version of the shadow and the light, as right. we call it, you know, the, the, mm. perhaps the darker sides and the lighter sides. Mm. And, and what I kind of do in conscious sexuality is to take people on a journey of exploration of the light side and also the darker side and through the medium of pleasure. Ah, can you say a bit more about that, through the medium of pleasure? That sounds interesting. <laughs> a, a, lot, a lot of therapy and self-work is always coupled with the fact this has got to be painful. Mm. You've got, you know, no pain, no gain. Mm. You know, and that's not just with exercising, it's with self-development work. Yeah. And whilst undoubtedly in any context doing self-development work will involve pain, it can be done in a pleasurable way, in an honouring way. Right. So what, so what we try and do with conscious sexuality is to connect with pleasure and our desires mm. and work with those through working with sexual energy through mm. the body mm. and noticing for example where we may have blockages mm. and very often in our pelvis we have a lot of holding right and, and you know I mentioned yoni healing earlier on yeah yoni healing is working on the whole pelvic area where there's a lot of tension held and there's um, something called the and I, and I always uh, Forget the full name because yeah. it's pubococcygenis, which is the PC muscle. Right. Okay. Good. <laughs> That's easier. <laughs> which, which is which is the muscle that goes across the pelvis. It's like a hammock and, it's, and supports the internal organs. And probably people can connect to it easier, easiest if they're peeing and they stop peeing mid flow. Yeah. And contract it. And. Um, it's a very, very powerful muscle for freeing up sexual energy and working with it. And, and, and we can learn to move sexual energy throughout our body by contracting and releasing it, both men and women. Wow. And, um, it, and, and we do exercises with breath and that contraction to start to help energy flow in the body. How does that link with orgasm, having an orgasm? Um, well, 
orgasm and the build up to orgasm is the build up of energy until it's released right. which probably takes 8 to 12 seconds according to the scientists and oh that, so for both women and men it can it can do yeah right. the sensations usually in women it goes on longer mm. um, but the sensation even in men is there afterwards um, and that and that release of energy then leads to a big mm. you know and very often particularly in men they go to sleep immediately afterwards <laughs> usually much to the annoyance of their partner <laughs> but um, what what we um, try and do in conscious sexuality and tantra is to go beyond, beyond orgasm mm. and connect through to the energy and, and keep the energy contained within the body so that we increase our aliveness and well-being so um, it sometimes gets called you know energy orgasms right. um, where, where you're in this extended state of, of energetic bliss where you're mm. using the energy to flow within the body mm. and you do that uh, in part through the contraction of the PC muscles and and breath and um, I've had some amazing experiences you know just connecting to the divine yeah. through just circulating that energy mm. You know, and, and, and I think in particular in men, there's a massive compulsion that you've got to ejaculate. Right, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and, and unfortunately it's influenced a lot by porn. Mm. You know, you, you, there, there has to be an ejaculation. And in fact, conserving the energy and circulating it can bring a real aliveness. Mm. I'd love to hear your thoughts on. Um how porn is affecting how men might be seeing women. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. And, <laughs> and you mentioned something earlier about object objectification. So, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that is the big O word. Right, that is the big word. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not oral sex, it's not orgasm, it's objectification. Right. And I, th I think it also, believe it or not, it's objectification of men. Oh. In, in, in the sense that, you know, a man, when he's presented in a porn situation, mm. is fully aroused and ready to go, and you know wants to have hard sex very often, and it's not very tender, mm. and, and 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 it's a lot of positions and it's a lot of domination, mm. typically. Mm. Um, obviously, there's all sorts of genres, but mm. mainstream mainstream porn. Um, and so, so for men, there's an object, objectification. Whereas, obviously, on the woman's side, she's in, in mainstream porn, typically passive, um, and a receptacle. Right. That's, that's not a great word, is it? A receptacle. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's an objectification. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and, and 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 typically, you know, it, it the ejaculation usually happens over her body. Yes. Yeah. And and, and um, it it's a way of control, you know, and it's very much in the male domination. And and certainly there there are good examples of female porn. Mm. Um, but generally speaking, porn is made by men for mm. men. Right. And what what is perceived men actually want and mm. plays into the stereotypical you are a man and this is the way you have to perform, you have to dominate, you have to be strong, mm. you have to be powerful, mm. you have to actually please women. And, and actually it puts a pressure on men because, mm. you know, we don't always perform like that, as you probably know. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> But that, but in, inherently, you know, for for people, for men that watch it, that there's a pressure. I have to be like this, and then there's the belief that that's what women want. Right. You know it. You know, for people, for men that watch a lot of porn, they believe that's reality. Yes. Yeah. It becomes reality, and that's actually what a woman wants. Mm -hmm. And 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 
you know, in, in my experience, it can be, yeah. but it's not the whole story. Mm. It's not actually what women want. And where does tenderness go? Mm. Where, where, where does just holding and caressing and, 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 and just snuggling and, and the beautiful things that happen mm. in the build up to sex and after sex? So how, um, so how does it affect if a, if a man is really into porn and he watches those particular types of porn, porn movies, how, how will that affect his relationship with the female? Uh, very often um, his interactions will have to be in a similar way. Mm. So, and ultimately uh, where it leads is that because no woman can live the life of that object mm -hmm. that's on the screen, he won't find women fulfilling. He won't actually be fulfilled by women because it's unrealistic. Yes. And and, and will lead to breakdown in relationship and addiction to more and more extreme forms of porn. Yes. I'm so glad you said that because I, I do know someone, a, a, a guy who's addicted to porn and he, at the same time, he's desperately wanted to be in a relationship but each time he meets a woman she's just not perfect enough the boobs aren't the right size or her legs are to this or a belly's that and and he has actually said I want them to look like they do in the porn movies well so, it, you know, the majority of porn stars uh, are surgically enhanced in fact so you know again they're not realistic models of being a woman, yeah, and 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 um, you know, the beauty of women is the variety. Ah, I love that. Yeah, you know that that that's the beauty of femininity is mm. the variety and the sensuality. Mm. Um, that's so nice that you said that because a lot of the women I know, and I've been through this, is that I thought I had to look a particular way. And um, I've got female clients at the moment who suffer from body dysmorphic disorder, mm -hmm. and it's such a, you know it's it's so heartbreaking to see because they're beautiful, gorgeous women, but they don't feel feminine because they don't think they fit a particular stereotype that they believe is what's perpetuated at the moment. And and I love what you're saying about there's more to a woman than than the body about femininity and how she feels about herself. Yeah, and, you know, and, and some of the most, the most beautiful women that I've met, met are not what you would call the catwalk model cover mm. girl type, but women that exude a positivity, yeah. a sensuality, a, a sense of their own power, mm. not in a male dominating way, but yeah. just total connection. Yeah. Really, the journey to conscious sexuality is is moving to that place of self empowerment, mm. um, of knowing who you are, and being able to express that in the way that's right for you. Yeah. Um, that that is conscious sexuality. It's not having loads of sex. Mm. You may do. Yeah. You know that everyone's sex drive is different, mm. but it's actually when you're living your life, you're living your life in your power and part of that power is your sexuality and the way that you wish to express it. Mm. So it's really about being authentic. Authentic. Yeah. And, and, and particularly I work with sexual, in the sexual arena because it's the arena which people are most familiar with energy and right. what energy is. Yeah. We, 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 as human beings, I've not, I've not, no, tell a lie, I haven't met two people that, that couldn't connect with sexual energy or never connected with sexual energy at some point in their lives. Mm. Mm. But the vast majority of people do connect with a sexual being at some point in their life mm. of that sexual energy, that, that primeval urge of lust um, and the desire. Yeah, and 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 when and when we're in that place of 
really connecting to that. We're in a place of connecting with our essence because, after all, you know, it's as I said earlier, it's our place of creativity. Mm. It's a place of life. Mm. It's a place of love, mm. especially when we connect it with the heart. Mm. Mm. A lot of the journey is also connecting heart and sex, um, and particularly with men. You know, men in particular are very cut off from their heart when it comes to sex. Right. You know, so, so sex is a very genital-focused activity. Right, okay. Rather than a heartfelt place. Mm. And when we can connect with that, we increase the power. And ultimately, if we can connect with spirit as well and bring in spirituality, it becomes a very, very different experience. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. And and, yeah, sorry. And, and, and the other thing is that when we get in that place, the peculiar thing is that things like erections and, and, and penetration don't actually matter. Ah. You know, what one, one can have an orgasmic experience, mm. an energetic orgasmic experience, by sharing intimacy with a partner through just breath and looking into their eyes, mm. and it's uh, and it's so powerful and so beautiful. Mm. Two people actually connecting, well, connecting differently. Yeah, connect, so, connecting. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's why I say it, it takes you beyond. Mm. beyond. Mm. And, um, you know, particularly for men who think, who really identify with their erections as. A means of their masculinity. Yeah. Um, it, it's a bigger aha moment that they can they can be in that connection with another without having to be. Mm. 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 So, John, could you say something more about how could a woman love herself? Mm -hmm. How how can she do that? Because if she's in a place of you mentioned something about self loathing. I, th I think, you know, when, you, when you're in a dark place mm. on your own, it becomes very, very difficult because you're stuck in a cycle of thoughts. And I've, I, I've been clinically depressed and on antidepressants. Mm. I've experienced it and I vividly recall my brother saying to me, can't you just pull yourself out? Ah, uh, yeah. You know, and he was genuinely trying to be helpful. Yeah. But you just didn't understand what I was going through. Yeah. You know, the fogginess and, and, and the cotton wool in the brain, the feeling of hopelessness, mm. um, that life's not worth living. Mm. And, and so it is about finding someone to journey with. And I'm not doing it to, just to promote my work, but, but it's just finding someone you trust. Yeah. That will walk alongside you. Mm. Well, they can't save you. No one can save you in, in terms of getting you out of it other than yourself. Mm. But it's really important to have someone that can hold your hand mm. and tell you things will be okay. Yeah. And sometimes put an arm around you and just listen and, and, and not try and save you because they can't. Yeah just be there for you mm. and help you find the way out of it. Mm. If you find someone that you trust and you can work with and it can be a friend, it can be a relation, it can be someone professional like you and me, mm. Mm. Just, just to be there and help and give insights of, and suggestions. Um, you know, I, although I, yeah, I do call myself a body awakener. It's more a facilitator. You know, I'm a facilitator. I'm not. I can't. I can't change anybody's life. Only mm. they can. Mm. Help facilitate that. Mm. And I guess that's what you do too. Yes. Is there any actual physical touch if someone were to come to you? Well, it, again, it depends because you know some people are traumatized by touch. I've yeah. been traumatized by the wrong sort of touch. So it wouldn't be appropriate for me to touch mm. them. Mm. Um, 
and, and so the request needs to come from them, you know. Right. You know, that, those words tell me what you want. You know? Yes. What can I do to help you? Yes. What, what would help make it feel better? Mm. And then when whatever the request is, is being done, I will check in and say, is that helping? Right. Because sometimes people get into a pattern and say, well, I've had this, you know, having a hug has helped me before. Mm. And, and, and sometimes it's just through force of habit. Mm. And it doesn't really help. So it's, it's checking in, in with people and seeing, is it working? Mm. What, so it becomes a conscious exercise as opposed to a, a subconscious exercise where we're working in, where the uh, client is working in their own head. Right. Uh, it's really important that there's an interaction. So if I'm working with someone, mm. I want to know what's understand, understanding. Mm. So it can bring consciousness to themselves. Mm. Mm. Because ultimately, it's consciousness that helps us get into a better place. Mm. Thank you. And how would you suggest a woman get more in touch with her femininity? Oh dear. <laughs> Again, you know, my, my experience is that femininity is different for every woman. Right. You know, that, that there isn't, yeah, there, there are certain things that you could say, well, that's the feminine approach. For example, can you give an example? You know, perhaps where, you know, a woman may see femininity as wearing a dress. Right. Um, and yet, I've spoken to some women that really don't like wearing dresses. Mm. And, and, and they would much rather pamper themselves as a way of connecting with their femininity. Mm. Um, you know, some women, some really feminine women that I know, won't wear makeup mm. um, because they feel it's dishonouring to them. Mm. Um, so when you said really feminine, what defines them as being really feminine in your mind? I'm just curious. I, I, I believe it's a person that identifies as being a woman, mm. being in their power, mm. being connected to their true selves, mm. whatever that is. Mm. Mm. And, and in terms of stereotypes, that may mean that they don't fit the stereotypical woman that's put forward in society, which every woman's compelled to, to mm. follow. Mm. It, 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 it's just them being themselves mm. in that physical body yes. and, ex and expressing it, mm. feeling true connection to who they are. Mm. That's what femininity is for me. Mm. And so, okay, okay. Fear of power of men is the way they believe. Okay, final one. You mentioned something about women fearing the power of men. Could you explain a little bit more about that, please, John? Um, our society is built on control. Right. And, 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 and we have a very masculine society, you know, people call it a patriarchal society, where power is seen as the thing to strive for. Mm. And power is a very masculine, yang energy. Mm. Um, so, you know, rich and famous. Right. Both things associated with power. Mm. Those are the things that we should strive for. Um, people that are rich and famous, you know, run big companies, are all looked up to. You know, um, the fact that we make heroes of soldiers mm. who go and kill people, mm. and yet someone that would work as a sex worker actually giving out love is despised. Mm. It, 
is is it right you know rape is power mm. but most men would rather make love but rape is an expression of power mm. over the woman. Mm. You know, we'd, we'd much rather cuddle a child than beat a child mm. so so inherently we have a loving aspect but society drives us to to for power you know to get more material things mm. you know to to have more and connect with each other less mm. so so to to my mind the, this thing of the mas masculine power is is that we need to bring femininity into society and it be respected for what it is which, which is a a wonderful source of nurturing. Mm. You wouldn't call our society nurturing. Mm. It, 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 it's very much every man and woman for themselves. Mm. Dog eat dog. Mm. Survival of the fittest. It's a jungle out there, mm. all sorts of terms. Mm. And, and yet, if we could just bring in love and nurturing and connection, um, the, pl the world would be a much more beautiful place. Look at the disconnect that's happening over Brexit. You know, mm. two different parties rah, 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 mm. fighting, fighting each other. Mm. And, 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 and so, where's the compassion? Mm. And, and really, if we're going to start changing society, we have to ch start changing ourselves. Yeah. And, uh, and that change starts, starts with you, you know, Michael mm. Jackson's man in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> and that can be a tough it's a journey, it can be a tough challenge, that's for sure. But wor a worthy one, yeah, yeah. from my experience. I absolutely agree with you. And, and, but the thing is that change starts with you. Yes. And, and, and that's the only way the world is going to change outside of you and inside of you, is by working with yourself and, and connecting. So, so if a woman is, so you know, I met a woman the other day who said she hates men. That was it. I hate men. I hate men. I hate men. Would you say that to her? So this change starts with you. If she's blaming men for her pain. Well, the first thing I'd say is that I'm not going to decry her experience. Mm. Her experience is her experience, and what mm. and what and what she's encountered is absolutely true for her. Mm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say, oh, you've made a big mistake. Those were her experiences, and they're valid. Mm. Um, if she wants to change that experience, then that's a different matter. Yeah. Now, very often we, we get injured and hurt, and that hurt causes us to contract mm. and, and, and go inside and, and then put up a shell. Yeah. And ourselves. Mm. No one's ever going to reach me. You know, I'm not going to let those bastards get me down. Mm. And, and, and so, what? journey really about is if that particular woman wanted to connect with men then there's a journey if she doesn't there's no point in trying to change her mind because her experience is are her reality mm. and and very often what happens is that when we want to change our experience it means letting go of our past experience the stories that we have the things that validate us mm. and, and, and bizarrely there's a huge comfort yeah we're very attached to them yeah holding on to the story because you know if one's got a heartbreaking story and I've got one we've um, all got one <laughs> yeah, I'm sure everyone has one <laughs> to relay that and to see people moved by it Mm. Um, creates a validity in me, you know, and people say, oh, that's so sad. Uh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. And the truth is, I haven't let go of it. If, every time I tell that story, I've not let go of it. I'm letting it be part of me. Yeah. And my challenge has been with my heartbreaking story, it's not to tell anyone it anymore because I've accepted it's something that's happened to me, it's mm. part of me, it's the reason that I am who I am, mm. but it's not the reason for being who I'm going to be mm. and who I am today, mm. in the sense of, that, that's my story. Mm.
Mm-hmm. Fabulous. So tell me, Joan, how can people get in contact with you? What projects are you working on at the moment? I'm um, very excited at the moment. We've uh, I've started um, a tantra company called Sacred Light Tantra. Sa- Sacred Light Tantra. Tantra. Okay. Yeah. As in shiny light. As <laughs> less calories light. <laughs> um, yeah, Sacred Light Tantra, um, and that's at www.sacredlighttantra.com. Okay. And we are looking to take people on tantric journey um, of self-discovery. And if people go to the website, they'll see what the journey is. And um, we, we're starting it up with a number of introductory events, and that includes our, our, our uh, cuddle workshops, which you plugged in a totally unconscious way, because it's called our cuddle workshops are called "Get in Touch with Yourself." Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, and, and you know, some people don't want to necessarily work with their sexuality, and that's fine. But they can come along to our "Get in Touch with Yourself" workshops, our cuddle workshops. Is that for both men and women? For men and women. Um, okay. I have experimented doing it with men, which was very interesting, um, but it's a way of being in a very, very safe environment mm. um, and exploring what you want mm. and what you don't like and what you do like without fear of judgment. Mm. And uh, people have had really powerful experiences, both men and women. Fabulous. And, and, um, the, the other thing is my one-to-one work I, I do f- through um, Nurture by Touch. Okay, all, all your details will be in the description box, but tell me more about that if someone wants to get to work one-on-one with you. Is it through Skype or just in person? How does it work? Uh, I, I, can, I can work in both ways, Right. It's depending on where people are located. Um, mm. I can work in both ways, but typically I work with Touch, so Skype yeah. doesn't necessarily work. Yeah. Although I can do some coaching, but we touch related coaching over Skype. Mm. Most of it is on a one to one, face to face basis. Okay. Okay. So, any final words, John, to single women who are looking for love? What would your parting words be? I think, I think the most important thing I would say to any single woman looking for love is to look for the love inside of you before. You look for love in anybody else mm. and connect to that. Mm. And, and be yourself. Know who you are and love yourself for that beautiful being that you are. Ah, I'm just taking all those words in. <laughs> Thank you so much for today. It's been really interesting. Very, very interesting because it's an area that I've explored in my past before. Mm-hmm. So, but it's nice to hear a, a different perspective on things, certainly. Certainly. And so I hope you watched watching John and listening to his wise words. And for me, I wish you all the love in the world. And bye-bye for now and bye, John. Bye. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> You're welcome and my pleasure. <laughs>